All right, hello, Mr. Nichols here talking about energy again. There's a few things we talked about already before. Specifically, we talked about work and different types of energy. We had gravitational potential energy, uh, kinetic energy, elastic potential energy, um, and those were the ones that we mainly talked about before. And then there was also the idea of work. So we're gonna go ahead and run through those again real quick. Um, first off, we're gonna talk a little bit about a situation. Let's say that we've got an object like this marker right here. It starts off high up in the air, and then I let go of it, and it falls downwards. Pretty straightforward, I think. And so what we're gonna talk about here is it starts off high in the air, it has some gravitational potential energy. As we let go, that, whoops, that gravitational potential energy gets turned into kinetic energy. It speeds up as it falls down. And so you can kind of think of it like it's a pool of energy that we've got. At the beginning, it's in gravitational potential energy. At the end, it's changed into kinetic energy. It's sort of like cup of water. So we're going to think of this as our gravitational potential energy. At the beginning, the marker starts up here, it falls downwards down to this lower height. And as it falls, the energy is converting from gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. So we can kind of think of it like this. If this is our gravitational potential energy here at the beginning, all the water is in gravitational potential energy, all the energy is gravitational potential energy. At the end, we're trying to get it to change into kinetic energy. So as it falls down, as it's like halfway down, now we've got some of the energy in gravitational potential energy and some of it in kinetic energy. And then as it continues to fall down until it hits the ground, it's gonna keep on going. Gravitational potential energy is gonna get converted and converted and converted into kinetic energy. And so that's what we get there. Oh, spilled a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about what that means in the meantime. So what we're gonna look at here is we've got gravitational potential energy going into kinetic energy. What if we go the other way around? What if we throw the object upwards? So at the beginning, it's got kinetic energy and that's gonna get converted. As it goes upwards, it's gonna slow down, slow down. That's what we learned in 2D kinematics is as an object goes upwards, it slows down. And so once it gets up to a certain height, it's gonna stop. So what's gonna happen there is, as it's moving upwards, it starts off with a lot of kinetic energy. As it's moving upwards, that energy is getting converted into gravitational potential energy until it gets up to the top. And once it's at its highest height, now no kinetic energy because it's not moving at all at the top. And then as it falls back down, that gravitational potential energy gets converted back into kinetic energy as it's falling downwards and speeding back up. But one thing you might notice is if something's going just as fast, it can only get a certain amount of gravitational potential energy here. We can't get any more energy because this is all the water that I've got. And so uh, there's no way for us to get more energy into the system than was there at the beginning, unless something comes from the outside. So if we wanted this to go faster, we would need to put more energy into it because kinetic energy tells you like basically how fast something's going. And Gravitational potential energy tells you basically how high something is up into the air. And so we wanted it to go faster than this, than it's fastest with this amount of energy, we'd need to add more energy. If we wanted to go higher than it was at the top, we need to add more energy. We need some external energy. And that's what work is. So we talk about that work being putting energy into a system, taking energy from somewhere else, like, I don't know, your own energy from the food that you eat and putting that into it. So if we wanted to go faster than this, we'd need some more energy. And so then we bring this in, we can add some more energy into this, and now the object can be going even faster than it was before. And as we speed up, we continue to go, and this is now our new amount of energy, because I ran out, I ran out in this case. I'd need more energy from somewhere else to go even faster. And I mean, for a real object, this would not be limited. You, you could continue to fill it up, but my cup uh, runs out at some points. So that's a limitation of our model here. And so now what I can do is say we've got all this kinetic energy. If I threw a ball upwards with this much kinetic energy, it would go even higher. So we would get an even more amount of gravitational potential energy, and it would go higher and higher and higher and higher until it made it up to the top. And it couldn't go anymore because kinetic energy is gone the velocity is back to zero. And so as I'm pouring these back and forth, I've made a couple splashes here on the ground too, where I've, I've spilled a bit uh, out of these cups. And so that is loss. We were talking a little bit about loss before as we were doing some of those positive physics and loss is when we lose energy. We have less than we started with because this is gravitational potential energy. If it all gets converted into kinetic energy, 
maybe the ball's gonna hit the ground and it's gonna bounce off the ground, but it won't get quite as high because some of that energy was lost. It's like if you're pouring water back and forth between two cups, eventually you're gonna spill some of it. And so friction is gonna cause loss. Uh, sound that's created is gonna cause loss of energy as we go through this system. And so here's just a couple visuals for you. We've got here this idea of a ball starting off high in the air. It's got gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. And then later on, that gravitational potential energy gets changed into kinetic energy. And so it can kind of slosh back and forth like this. If you had something like bouncing up and down, a ball bouncing up and down, it would go from gravitational potential to kinetic as it speeds up and it falls. But the thing that's unique about this is that the total amount of energy stays the same. It's constant. And some of it could be lost and some of it could be added into the system, but within the system, if nothing else, if none of the energy leaves or goes uh, or is added, then the total amount of energy stays the same. It just changes which type of energy it's in. And so what we talk about this energy going into or out of a system, that's what work is. And so work is energy transfer. It can be positive or negative, as you might see right here. And this was the equation we had before. Work is equal to the force times the distance times cosine of theta. We're not gonna be using that one a whole lot more, this unit, but it's this sort of idea that if, the, if you're pushing something across a distance, then you're doing work. If, it does, if it's not moving, you can't do any work, but if you're pushing something across a distance, you're gonna be doing work on it. If you're pushing the same general direction that it's moving, positive work. If you're pushing the opposite direction, if something's coming towards you and you're pushing away, that would be slowing it down, so you'd be doing negative work. You're taking energy out. Its energy is going into you instead of the other way around where your energy is going into it. And so the way that we've talked about that is either as positive or negative work or using the terminology that we've used, you can call it positive work, just work, and negative work to be loss, where you're losing energy. All right, last thing about this is, what if you wanted to lift up this, this marker? If you wanted to take it from here up to this height, you could do that, but you would have to do work because right now, on the table, it has no kinetic energy, no gravitational potential energy. It's as, it's as if this glass was completely empty, both glasses. And so I guess I can show it this way. It would be like this. You've got both of these empty. And now what's gonna have to happen is you're gonna lift this one up. You've gotta put in work. You've gotta add energy to lift it up. So here we go. I'm adding in energy to lift this up. And now we've gotta up at a certain height. It's gravitational potential energy. So I did work to lift this up. Now, let's think about this. What if I start off down here and I lift it up really quick? Did I do more work or less work than if I lifted it up very slowly? I still got it to the same height, which means the same gravitational potential energy. So that means I did the same amount of work. But what was different was how quickly I did the work. And how quickly you do the work is basically how tired you feel when you're done. This has a special name. This is something called power. It's the output, how much work you do in a certain amount of time. So this is why, you know, it's, it might be pretty easy to walk up 100 flights of stairs if you took, you know, four hours. But if you try to run up 100 flights of stairs in five minutes, you'd be pretty tired. So this is that idea that power is how much energy, how much work you're doing every second per second. And so uh, we can take a look at that real quick. Here's our written out equation, power is equal to the work over time. So P is equal to W over T. And this has units, power. The unit of power is called the Watt, W-A-T-T. -T. And so sometimes I like to joke and say Watt is the unit of power as if it's a question, but it's not a question. That's a statement that Watt is the unit for power. And uh, it's one that we use a lot. Another less common uh, one, well, one that you might've heard more often uh, is the Horsepower, horsepower is a unit of power. It's how we measure the power of, a, of engines and things. And watts, you might've heard of light bulbs being measured in watts. Uh, so these are some of the things we're gonna talk a little bit more about as we keep going on. But this idea of conserving energy, that it's just kind of going back and forth between different things. So think about that as you're answering some of these questions. Think about power as we're looking at some of these questions and think about where work is happening. When you're putting energy in or you're losing energy, you're taking energy out of an object. And that's what you need to pay attention to today as you do this assignment. Thanks.